Welcome back. In this session, we'll create a Databricks compute for our use. But before we do that, let's understand a bit more detail about the compute so that we know what compute we will create. So what is a compute? An Azure Databricks compute is a set of computation resources and configurations on which you can run your workload. For example, an ETL pipeline or machine learning experiments. In our case, we'll be writing some ETL code and we'll execute that in our Databricks compute. So our Databricks compute usually has one driver node and one or more worker nodes. All the nodes will have the VM image with pre-installed libraries that we specify while we create the compute. So there are two types of computes in Databricks. You can use an all-purpose or an interactive compute to analyze the data interactively using notebooks and also collaborate with other team members within your team. These interactive computes are manually created and you manually terminate and restart. On the other hand, job computes are created by Databricks Job Scheduler. When you run a job and they're automatically terminated at the end of the job execution, you cannot restart a job compute once it's terminated. In this course, we'll create an interactive compute to set up our environment and then we'll use Azure Data Factory to execute our transformation notebook on a job compute. So we are going to create both of those and I'll show you how that's done. So let's switch over to the Databricks workspace and create an interactive compute or an all-purpose compute first. Okay, here I am in the Azure portal. Let's hit our dashboard and then from there we can click on the workspace to get to our workspace. And now click on Launch Workspace for Databricks. Okay, let's click on Computes. And as we said before, we are going to create an interactive compute in this session. So let's click Create Compute and then we need to name our compute. I'm going to call it as COVID Reporting Compute. And on the compute mode, you've got a few choices. So you can have high concurrency standard or a single node. So you, if you have multiple people working on the same compute, so you would want to go for a high concurrency compute. And if you have single users, then you normally can use a standard compute. But I'm going to have a single node compute here because we don't have enough codes available within the subscription. That will be the case for you guys if you're using free tier subscription. That's why I want to use a single node compute and this will give you just a driver node. There are no worker nodes so you can only process small amount of data which is sufficient for what we are doing. So let's select on a single node compute. And you need to pick a runtime version. So you got a choice of multiple runtime versions. You can read about all these things in Databricks documentation but it's normally best to choose one which has got a long-term support so I'll go for the most recent one which is the 13.3 LTS. Next we will leave the checkbox marked for use of Photon Acceleration. Next we will select Node Type. Here we will go with minimum configuration that is standard DS3 V2 which offers 14 gigabytes memory with 4 cores. Next we can set Terminate After. This is a quite cool feature. So because you are going to be spending money while the compute is running, you can terminate your compute after a few minutes of inactivity. So if you've forgotten to terminate it manually, it'll terminate it itself. So I'm going to go for 10 minutes. So if I'm not doing anything for the next 20 minutes, I want to terminate the compute so I can save some money. Okay, now we need to choose the node type. You need to pay more attention to this one because this is what will cost you money and also this gives you the power to run your workloads. It's by default selected the standard DS3 underscore V2 which is a general purpose compute. But if you wanted to have a memory optimized or compute optimized or GPU accelerated, you can choose them. It's all grayed out for the GPU accelerated because we are on a single load compute. So you'll have to be on a high concurrency or a standard compute to be able to select those things. Let's leave that as it is. But you can see here, we get 14 gigabytes memory for core CPU and it's going to be 1.5 Databricks units. So the costing is normally done based on Databricks units, but you can convert that into real money. In this case, we are going to be spending 1.5 Databricks units per hour. There are no worker nodes, so it is 0 DBU for that one. 
But in order to do the calculation to find out how much it is going to cost you in terms of real money, you can see that within the Microsoft portal for the Databricks pricing. So if you go down here, we are talking about all-purpose compute for us and on a standard tier, that's what we've chosen. It's going to cost me 40 cents per hour. Say if I'm running it for a couple of hours, it'll cost you less than a dollar per hour. So this is what you want to do. But so if you are in a free tier, all of that will be free for you, but you still want to understand how much that is going to take from your credits. So let's head back to our compute. So now, you can specify other options like if you have an init script or any kind of other information you can put in here. But if you click create compute, it should create the compute for you. Okay, the compute is now created. It took about 3 minutes to create the compute. As you can see, that green dot shows that actually it's running. So if you want to see all your running computes, you can click back on that one and it will show you all the computes here. But at the moment, we only have this one compute and it gives you all the other information about the drivers, workers, and who's created and all that kind of stuff as well. So if you want to terminate this compute, you can click on the compute and then click on terminate to terminate the compute. Or if you have any problems with the compute, then you can restart it as well. Once you've done everything, if you want to delete the compute, you can go ahead and delete it as well. Okay, that's the end of this session. In the next session, we'll attach our data lake storage account to this compute so that we can access the storage account from here. I'll see you then.